There's one CNC material more people should be using, but almost no one's talking about it. It's fast, waterproof, durable, and doesn't even require a finish. But here's the catch, it's not wood. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what it is, how to use it, and everything you need to know before you put your hands on it. Let's get right into it. So everything you see on this table was made from this material. So what this material is called, or what it's made from, is HDPE, or high density polyethylene, so like milk cartons. The material we're gonna be covering today is called Color Core by King Plastic. It has three different layers, and you have different color options and different size options to choose from. And so all of these projects right here were made from that material and I had zero finishing on it. I literally took it right off the CNC and it's good to go. So that's the material we're gonna be covering today is this King Color Core. I'm gonna show you how to machine it on the CNC, how to work with it in your shop, some different nuances I've learned after using it over the years and why nobody really talks about it. And also in the video, we'll be making a project out of it using this half inch blue, white, blue. Let's get right into it. So why is nobody talking about this? Well, for one, you don't just see these sheets at Home Depot sitting on the shelf, right? And there's a couple different reasons from that. So think about it from the business standpoint. There's so many different colors of this material and so many different sizes. So for a business to stock all of these gets really, really expensive and covers a lot of space. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is that it's actually decently hard to become a supplier of this material, but I am excited to announce that CSE Workshop is now carrying King Color Core, but of course you're not gonna get it in these really heavy four by eight sheets. So we're gonna cut them down for you so you can stick them on your CNC. Now, another reason you may not have heard of it is because most of the time you're probably shopping in a hardwood dealer, right? Where wood's standing up, you're going to sawmills. And so nobody really carries plastic. And so that's another reason. And the last reason is that this sheet right here costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It is very, very expensive. So now think you have to stock a whole bunch of this stuff, all the different colors, and it's not even wood, right? That's why you don't have a huge amount of access to it and why it's not getting talked about but I believe that this material is gonna be on the rise because of the rise of hobby CNCs. It's that perfect storm for this material to really start taking that spotlight because it is so easy to work with, so fun to work with, and it makes outdoor stuff. It's awesome. So let's head back on the CNC and start working on our project. All right, so the color we're making this project out of today is going to be the blue, white, blue, and we're gonna be using the half inch thickness now it does come in quarter inch, half inch, and three quarter inch thickness. So how plastic pricing works is the half inch material is gonna cost twice as much as quarter inch, and the three quarter inch material is obviously gonna cost three times as much as the quarter inch because plastic goes off of weight. So that's just something to keep in mind whenever you're buying all this. I mean, honestly, these quarter inch pieces look really good and the sign works great. This particular sign we're making today is gonna to go by the pool, which is a perfect application for this because it is waterproof, it doesn't fade, and this is a beautiful, beautiful blue. So let's get to cutting out the sign. So as I'm getting this clamp down, do take into consideration that this is a plastic and it doesn't have a lot of structural integrity like most materials. And so it's gonna bend and move a lot, and especially on quarter inch, but even on this half inch, if you notice right here in this corner, it's actually, even though I have a clamp here, it's still popping up. So I'm gonna have to put another clamp right here. And that's just something to think about whenever you are machining with a CNC that does not have a vacuum table. And the machine I'm using today is the Shapoko 5 Pro by Carbite 3D. If you're interested in it, check the link in the description. I believe you can order this machine on a Monday and get it by a Friday as long as you're within the US, which is crazy. So the bits we're using today to cut this color core they're gonna be called O-flute bits. And this is the one caveat whenever you're machining this color core is that I highly recommend using the O-flute bits and not just standard woodworking bits because what this O-flute bit does, it ejects the chips upwards and prevents gumming up. I did a full video on these. I'll leave that link in the description. So we're gonna start off with this quarter inch O-flute and then move on to the eighth inch O-flute to do a lot of the pocketing. Let's go.
That's not right. Let me uh, stop that and uh, double check my origin. And yeah, yeah. Had the quarter origin set and I did a center origin. So uh, let me change that around real quick and then we'll get it running. Take two. <laughs> so notice whenever we're cutting, those ships are flying everywhere. Well, that's because that oak flute loves to just create that rooster tail and kick out those ships. And it does that so nothing really welds together. Now, how far must you go down in order to get through that layer? Well, the top layer is about 0 0.05 inches thick, but I recommend going a little over a 16th, so like a 0 0.07 inch depth to get past the top layer to really make sure you're hitting that second layer. Now, this type of pocketing that we're doing, is gonna be perfectly fine getting past that. So I use that quarter inch bit to do most of the pocketing. Then we're gonna come back and do the detail work with this eighth inch. So one cool thing about the Shipoko, after I did that bit change, it automatically touched off on this bit setter right here. And so I'm not worried about that bit coming back and being at a different Z height because of that bit setter. So that is a cool thing about the Shipoko that is really awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is do an engraving right here on this bottom part. And we're gonna be testing two different things. Test number one is going to be which bit is better. Is it gonna be a solid carbite 60 degree V bit or a carbite tip 60 degree V bit? The second thing we're gonna be testing is because that layer is 0 0.05 inches thick, how is that gonna affect our engraving, right? How is it gonna look? And so that's the next thing we're gonna be looking at whenever we do this. And then I have some pointers. If you're getting value from this video, like and subscribe. And if you want anything you've seen in the video, whether it's the King Color Core or the bits, check that out at CIC Workshop. We'd love to have you. Let's do it. Pretty cool. Next up is the carbite tip bit, and then we'll see if there's a difference. So after these two engravings, notice that this bottom one has a lot more fuzzies. That is the one that is the carbite tipped V-bit, and the one on top is the three flute solid carbite V-bit. But what's kind of funny is whenever I made this sign earlier, the carbite tipped V-bit actually had less fuzzies and the solid carbide one had more. But on this sign, it's kind of flip-flopped. Kind of weird. But if you do get those fuzzies, just get you a cheap brass brush from Harbor Freight, something like that. And you can just go in there and just clean those out really nice and easy. Another way to do it is I'm just gonna rerun that exact same tool path and it's gonna clean that up as well. So let's rerun it and get those letters cleaned up. So since the winner this time was the solid carbite three flute bit, we're gonna load it back up in there and do that last line. Y'all are gonna like this sign, it's pretty funny. 
I'm actually making it for somebody in the shop. We'll go give it to them after we cut it out. All right, so what do we figure out from our two tests? Test number one is that for this cut, the three flute solid carbide bit actually did better. Test number two is how deep should we set it right? Well, for this particular font in this setup, the engraving looks good, even though that top layer is 0.05 inches thick. But I would imagine if this was smaller, I would actually have to set the start depth a little bit deeper, let's say 0.05, right, or 0.03. That way, whenever it starts, it's kind of already getting into that next color, which is gonna make those engravings really pop. So let's get this thing cut out and we'll go present it to somebody in the shop who may or may not have a history associated with this sign. All right, so we're putting in the eighth inch bit again. We're gonna be drilling some holes with it and cutting everything out because the eighth inch bit has a half inch cutting length. This half inch material should do good. All that damn plastic on there. It's just gonna cut it out. Oh, yeah. All right, sign came out good. Let's go put some finishing touches on it and talk about the cons of this material. All right, so cool thing about this material is that it works just like any other wooden material. So you can miter cut it, you can use it on your table saw, you can cut it all up, and you can even put a little routered edge on it, like so. All right, so put a beautiful, nice little routered edge on it, but now, this is where we're getting gonna get into some of the cons. And so a couple of the cons, you cannot sand this material. If you try to sand it, it gets scratch marks, it kind of deglazes it or dehazes it. Um, it just doesn't look good. So like for instance, right here at this corner where I routered it a little too deep with that round over, the only thing I can really do is just kind of come over there, scratch it with my finger, take out my knife and try to like blend that edge. The other thing is, you know, you, you get all these pocketing marks when you do something really big. It shows up even worse on really dark material. That's why we're gonna carry a lot of the white core because it's really good for the CNC world. Another thing is that nothing adheres to it. So if I were to take spray paint and paint it on here, I can scratch that sp spray paint right off. But vice versa, if I wanted to glue something on it, the glue is not gonna stick. The only way to get something on this material is to actually like weld it on with another piece of plastic. So what you see is what you get, right? The only way is you have to screw it from the back and hold on another piece of material, which doesn't work. I don't do a whole bunch of this in my shop because Daniel right here loves to sand every day doing these Millennium Falcons. Now, Daniel, who do you think this is for, by the way? It's a Brian. All right, sign's good. It's gonna last outside forever. Let's go give it to the recipient. It's Brian. Oh, hey Brian. Hey, I made you a sign. Hey. This is for you, because I know you have accidents in your hot tub you made. We've talked about it. All right, all right. Oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. yeah. So We're gonna be all right. Hey, take your sign, man, take your sign. And remember, gotta do the outro. You gotta do the outro. Oh, okay. All right, guys, there you have it. It's beautiful, it's awesome. Hope you gained a lot of knowledge from this video. And as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you, you ain't, ain't cutting, cutting it right. right. Boom, baby!